ده المبنى بتاع الكلية الملكية في البحرين ما شاء الله مم. عاملين المسلة دي زي ايرلند يعني عاملين المبنى زي ما يكون في ايرلند ان شاء الله نحاول نعمل حاجة في اكتوبر وزي ما قلت حضرتك سيمبوزيوم 2 3 دايز بمناسبة الورلد منتل هيلث داي ونخبركم عليه نسعد الله مساكم واهلا بكم في اللقاء الاسبوعي لقاءنا اليوم مع الدكتوره شارلوت كامل الطبيبه النفسيه المخضرمه في دوله البحرين واستحدثنا عن فاكتيشيس ديس اوردر تفضلي دكتوره شكرا دكتور وليد بشكرك وبشكر الجرو او ماي ديستينجوشد كوليكس في الاكتيف سايكاتريست اي ريسبكت اول اوف ذيم اند وي ار بينيفيتينج ا لوت فروم ذيس جروب Uh, from all my colleagues and especially from you. So thank you. Uh, I found this topic very interesting. Uh, so we will go through it uh, step by step. Uh, my, the contents of the presentation is in front of you. Definition, epidemiology, etiology, historical background, uh, which I found interesting. Testing diagnosis and clinical features, types, differential diagnosis, course and prognosis, and treatment. Uh, what is factitious disease or disorder? The intentional production of feigning disease or falsification oneself to relieve emotional distress by assuming uh, by assuming uh, the role of a sick person. Although the self-destruct induction of disease is conscious, act it's conscious. Uh, people with factitious disease induce the symptom, and they know they are inducing it, but they deceive the medical personnel. Underlying motivation is unconscious, but inducing it is conscious. I cannot see the whole screen. Ah, okay. Uh, what is factitious disorder? It is a serious mental health disorder. The person appears sick after producing physical or mental illness. Producing, yani making physical or mental illness is not ill. People with factitious disorder deliberately produce the symptoms of an illness for the purpose of receiving care and attention in a medical setting. Uh, all the approval they want from life is from medical settings. Symptoms are not intended to get them practical benefits. They gain believed to be mainly psychological. They don't have any material rewards. It's a, an intrinsic or internal psychological gain. Factitious disorder is considered a mental illness associated with severe emotional difficulties and patients like likelihood of harming themselves by continuing to produce more symptoms resulting in getting themselves unnecessary procedures and surgery. Uh, these patients are extremely difficult to uh, diagnose or detect because they don't appear different from patients with authentic causes of similar symptoms. They present symptoms and signs uh, similar to uh, ordinary patients suffering from these disorders. Because their psychiatric abnormalities are not appreciated, and because doctors and nurses have a low index of suspicion. And in doctors in hospitals, uh, especially medical doctors, you know, think about, you know, the problem as purely medical. And they try one investigation after the other. Uh, they have low index for suspicion of, you know, a psychological abnormality. Uh, they also, the one, what complicates the problem more is that this population of patients tend to seek treatment and at many different healthcare facilities, resulting in statistics that are misleading. This is the pathogenesis for factitious disorder. It's early deprivation or trauma or abuse in childhood. Uh, suffering, so they are used to suffering. So suffering provides meaning to their life, suffering. Uh, the emotional distress, make them induce or feign illness. So they consult physical people for relief of self-induced symptoms. They assume the sick role. Uh, 
uh, and that provides them with a relief of emotional distress. Okay, so the suffering which provide meaning of life, this is an unconscious process. They don't know it themselves. Uh, but uh, to induce the symptoms, they know very well that they are faking and they deceive the medical population. International classification of diseases of mortality and morbidity, the 11th revision by WHO in 2022, uh, you know, uh, presents three, three categories. Facti factitious disorder imposed on self, on another, like dependent person, elderly, child, uh, pet, or unspecified. These are the code numbers. Uh, it's actually group, يعني, part of a group of different disorders. And the big category is disorders of adult personality and behavior. ICG-11, F... So... Circadian rhythms, sleep-wake cycle, and gender incongruence. So factitious disorder comes in the middle. Uh, it has its different pathology and course, but this is, you know, I like to show you the ICG-11, um, uh, you know, position of factitious disorder. Uh, in DSM-5, which came in 2011, uh, it is classified under somatic symptoms and related disorders. Description of the disorder has changed. Uh, from motivation to assume sick role to deceptive behavior, which is ev evident in the absence of external incentives. And the meaning is not different. I became interested in the historical thing. Is this a new uh, disorder or an old disorder? So I came to know through literature that the word factitious comes from the Latin adjective factitious, meaning made by art, artificial man-made, it's not natural. Uh, the first Roman physician, Claudius Gallen, uh, in the second century, first mention of feigned diseases. He didn't spell it out as factitious, but he, you know, he called them feigned diseases and how to detect them. Then the next step was by the Irish physician, Hector Gavin in 1843. He first used the term factitious disease. In 1943, Carl Menninger discussed the compulsion of certain neurotic characters to secure repeated surgical operations. Menninger concluded that polysurgical addiction is a form of self-destruction. It's a partial suicide in which the responsibility for the act is partially shifted to the surgeon. And these people are very miserable internally. They want to destroy themselves. And they shift this, you know, to uh, the surgeon or the medical personnel. In 1951, Asher created the name Munchausen syndrome, which is, you know, the oldest name in uh, the international classifications for factitious disease, the most extreme form of factitious disorders. Rare condition. Uh, this is a mistake. It's not more common in men. It's, you know, it's rare and more common in women. As we will see here, this is a bit of epidemiology. 5% uh, of physician patient encounters in USA involve factitious diseases. 9% cases of fevers of unknown origin or recurrent infections were self-induced. It is estimated that about 1% of those admitted to hospitals are believed to have factitious disorder, but this is likely to be underreported. Prevalence among general population is unknown reported by American Psychiatric Association in 2013. Getting accurate statistics is difficult because these patients don't typically acknowledge their disorder and they move around. They move from one uh, medical setup to the next one. Two main groups of, groups of people more, uh, most commonly affected, women between 20 and 40 and with healthcare, people with healthcare background. Onset of illness is usually in early adulthood often following hospitalization for medical or psychiatric reasons. It's an episodic illness, but can become lifelong. Overall prognosis is poor. When confronted, they deny their behaviors and very few will seek treatment. Victims of factitious disorder, children, the mortality rate can reach between six to 22%. Poisoning and suffocation are the most common forms of harm. 
types of factitious disorders. Uh, there are factitious disorders mostly with psychological symptoms. Uh, they mimic behavior typical of a mental illness, schizophrenia. Uh, they appear confused, make absurd statements, support hallucinations, experience of sensing things that are not there. Uh, Ganser syndrome, sometimes called prison psychosis, is a factitious disorder first observed in prisoners. Uh, the second one is factitious disorder with mostly physical symptoms. People with this disorder claim to have symptoms related to physical illness. Symptoms of chest pain, stomach problem, fever. This order is sometimes referred to as Munchausen, named for Baron von Munchausen, an 18th century German officer, was known for embellishing stories of his life and experiences, creating, you know, uh, magical stories uh, about himself. Factitious disorder with both psychological and physical symptoms. And it could be only psychological, only physical, or both of them together. Uh, there are two types. Factitious disorder imposed on self include falsifying of psychological or physical signs or symptoms. An example of a psychological factitious disorder is mimicking behavior typical of mental illness such as schizophrenia. We mentioned that before. The other one is factitious disorder imposed on others. Uh, people with this disorder produce symptoms of illness under their care, children, elderly, disabled people, pets. It most often occur in mothers who intentionally harm their children in order to receive attention. And I'm sure uh, you are like me. We heard this story. Usually we read it in magazines and uh, general news. When it happens, it's very you know, traumatic. Diagnosis is not given to the victim. Diagnosis is given to the perpetrator, the mother usually. Uh, mechanisms employed, self-induced infections, surreptitious ingestion of medicine, vitamins, and minerals excessively, self-induced injury, phlebotomy on self or animal, thermometer manipulation, like putting the thermometer in hot water in order to convince doctors and nurses that they have fever, simulation of clinical manifestation of specific diseases. Uh, so, uh, uh, these symptoms, uh, how those uh, with factitious disorder fake symptoms, they make up symptoms and illness in several ways, exaggerating existing symptoms. Even when an actual medical or psychological condition exists, they may exaggerate symptoms to appear more sick and more impaired than true. Making up stories, they may give loved ones, healthcare professionals, support groups, false medical history of having cancer or AIDS, uh, or they may falsify medical records to indicate illness. Faking symptoms, we spoke about it, causing self-harm, they make themselves sick, injecting themselves with bacteria, milk, whatever, and they may injure, cut, or burn themselves, may take medications such as blood thinners or drugs for diabetes to mimic diseases. Also, they may interfere with wound healing, such as reopening or infecting cuts. Sometimes they do tampering. They may manipulate medical instruments to school results, heating up thermometers, or they may tamper with lab tests. So they have many different ways for faking illness. What are the possible warning signs when a doctor or a nurse or a health personnel should suspect this? Dramatic, inconsistent medical history. Unclear symptoms that are not controllable become more severe or change once treatment has begun. Unpredictable relapses following improvement without any outward signs and symptoms. Extensive knowledge of hospitals or medical terminology, as well as textbook description of illness. Presence of many surgical scars appearance of new or additional symptoms following negative test results. This is why we, we say it's more common in people who used to be healthcare workers or spouses of healthcare workers uh, or, you know, or uh, women. So what are the warning signs? Presence of symptoms only when the patient is alone or not being observed. Uh, willingness, uh, or eagerness to have medical tests. They welcome, they welcome any surgical intervention and any procedure. Even if it's harmful, they accept and give consent. 
a history of seeking treatment at many hospitals, clinics, and doctor's offices in different cities, preferably. Reluctance by the patient to allow healthcare professionals to meet with or talk to family members. They don't want any, you know, uh, medical personnel to meet their family and friends, so they don't know the truth. Maybe, you know, they saw them while, you know, fiddling with themselves and causing, you know, uh, playing with the thermometer or taking unnecessary tablets or infecting themselves. Also, they don't like uh, their doctors to contact prior healthcare providers. Refusal of psychiatric or psychological evaluation completely. They are very stubborn regarding this, refusing this completely. Forecasting negative medical outcomes despite no evidence. And they sabotage discharge plan. They want to stay in hospitals uh, or attend clinics, suddenly become more ill when they are about to be discharged from hospital settings. So it's all a gaining process. They gain comfort from, you know, being looked after, but they are unconscious of this motive. Uh, as we said before, there is what causes it, abuse, trauma, family dysfunction, social isolation, early chronic medical illness, or professional experience in healthcare, training as a nurse, health aide, or whatever. Exact cause is not known. Researchers believe both biological and psychological factors play a role. It's not easy for an individual to harm himself or herself. Uh, some of the symptoms, they lie about or mimic symptoms. They hurt themselves. They alter diagnostic tests. They are willing to undergo painful or risky tests and operation in order to obtain sympathy and special attention given to truly medically ill people. Uh, most people with this condition do not believe they have factitious disorder. They may be entirely aware of why they are inducing their illness. Many people with factitious disorders suffer from other mental disorders like personality or identity disorders. What are the consequences of this behavior? It's very serious. Doctors prescribe unnecessary procedure and therapies that may result in iatrogenic disease. Damage to patients from doctors exceeds the harm resulting from patient self-induced illness and the ethical conflicts. If a patient with factitious disease mistakenly diagnoses as having psychogenic pain, uh, when in fact symptoms were caused by an overlooked physical problem, this involves antithesis of factitious disease. People with factitious disorder are also at high risk of health problems by hurting themselves. They may suffer health problems related to multiple tests, procedure, and treatments. They are at a high risk for substance abuse and suicidal attempts. Uh, complication of factitious order imposed on others is abuse and potential death of victims. Now we'll talk about differential diagnosis. There are many conditions, you know, in which, you know, uh, people present as being ill or having symptoms. So we have factitious disease number one, we have malingering, we have somatization, we have hypochondriasis, we have conversion disorder. Uh, and we will uh, embark on a journey to see what's happening with this. Factitious disorder, conscious and intentional feeling, as we said, we already said this one, malingering. Malingering is a conscious and intentional production or exaggeration of symptoms for material gains, such as gaining money, for being sick, uh, uh, using drugs, avoidance of military service, escape from punishment. Uh, malingering is not a mental disorder. Factitious disorders are mental health disorders, but malingering is fully conscious act, criminal or you know uh, legal, and uh, they have nothing to do with psychiatry, malingering. They know what they are doing. They produce the symptom, and uh, they get the material gain. Uh, previously in ICG-10, there was a diagnosis called somatoform disorder. In ICG-11, the name has changed it into bodily distress disorder. And it is the recurrent and multiple actual symptoms, pain, gastrointestinal, sexual, pseudoneurological, that have no organic basis, believed to be due to unconscious expression of suppressed emotional conflict or stress. But unlike factitious disease, these symptoms are not created by voluntary conscious behavior. 
and patients do not fake symptoms or mislead others. So there are two important differences between bodily distress and uh, factitious disease. In DSM-5, they call them somatic symptom and the related disorders. Uh, health anxiety disproportionate and persistent concerns about medical seriousness, excessive time and energy devoted to symptoms or health concern. Those are the three criteria. So the name is bodily distress disorder in ICG-11, in DSM-5, somatic symptom and the related disorders. Next one online is hypochondriasis. Obsession with fears that one has serious undiagnosed disease, presumably based on misinterpretation of bodily sensations. ICG-11 has placed hypochondriasis now within the group of obsessive compulsive and related disorders because of the repetitive idea and act. Uh, DSM-5 has retained hypochondriasis within the cluster of somatic symptom and related disorders due to high co-occurrence of hypochondriasis with somatization disorder, shared cognitive perceptual skills. So hypochondriasis, they produce the symptoms, and uh, but they are not uh, conscious. They, are, they don't produce the symptoms uh, on a conscious level. Conversion disorders have been grouped in ICD-11 with dissociative disorders. Uh, under the new name, dissociative neurological symptom disorder. Yeah, you know, dissociative disorders in general, specific thing. Ne dissociative neurological symptom disorder. DSM-5 continued to place dissociative disorders separately from conversion disorders. I like to, you know, show you this graph because I really liked it. Uh, it's for a patient who presents with unclear or unexplained medical symptoms. Doctor cannot diagnose that it belongs, that the physical conditions, the lab test, the imagery, you know, point towards a specific medical problem. So in this case, you know, uh, uh, this can, can be produced unconsciously or intentionally, okay? Unconsciously, it will be two conditions. Uh, either unconscious, unconscious motivation, uh, unconscious motivation, this one. Unconscious motivation. The gain is none. So if they are not gaining anything out of it, it's a somatic symptom and related disorders. Just expression of internal distress, psychological distress. Uh, if the motivation is unconscious, symptom production unconscious, motivation unconscious, internal primary chief goal is psychological, this is factitious disorder. Uh, because they have an internal goal. They want sympathy and empathy and, uh, you know, uh, gain, prim primary psychological gain. Uh, in, uh, the other one, intentional. Uh, motivation is intentional. There is an external gain. Secondly, this is malignant. So this one, you know, just to differentiate how people with unclear or unexplained medical symptoms should be looked at. Now we reach the end of the presentation about approaches for treatment. And I found two interesting things. Uh, uh, medical patient relationship is physician patient relationship is a doctor role and patient role. So I'll go quickly through the doctor's role. Traditional doctor patient relationship is a co cooperative, complementary partnership. Patient and physician respectfully fulfill their obligations and the privileges as prescribed by society. Doctor must act on behalf or in the best interest of patient welfare, curing the patient whenever possible, not harming the patient and maintaining patient's confidence. Okay? But the patient has a big role also. His role consists of three basic features. It is not the sick person's fault that he or she became sick. Patients are excused from their ordinary daily obligations and expectation as a result of their illness, if they are really ill. Patients must make every attempt to regain health, including a requirement to their physician to detect and explain supposed cause of their disease. So these two factors, you know, uh, are not fulfilled for factitious disorders. So what is the management? How do we treat these people? There is no medication unless there is a coincident or coexisting uh, depression or anxiety or personality uh, personality disorder. 
The first goal of treatment is to change person behavior and reduce misuse of medical resources. Uh, in the case of factitious disorder imposed on another, the main goal is to ensure safety and the protection of any real or potential victims. Once the first goal is met, treatment aims to resolve any underlying psychological issues that may be causing the behavior. So the main treatment for these disorders is through counseling and psychotherapy. Changing the thinking and behavior of the individuals through CBT, family therapy help in teaching family members not to reward or reinforce behavior of the person with the disorder. There are no medication to treat this, as I said. Uh, in factitious disorders, the sick role is attained via fraudulent means. A patient deceives a physician or a healthcare worker. Patient intentionally deceives the physician by presenting false medical data and history, by withholding information unconsciously regarding the cause of the disease. As a result, the physician is not aware of the above, so he does not suspect or know all facts. As a result, unneeded, inappropriate diagnostic tests and therapies are prescribed and willingly accepted by patients. All of the above, as we said, result in iatrogenic disease. The factitious disease patient's partner in illness is the doctor. Unfortunately, the greatest damage to these patients due to doctor's actions rather than any direct action by the patient. Uh, factitious disease represents patients' attempt to cope with emotional distress, as we said, desperate need of help. These patients are in desperate need of help. An understanding and supportive attitude of staff will make it possible for the patient to cope with and live through the shame, shattered self-image that will result from confrontation. And confrontation doesn't work with them. You know, they will uh, deteriorate. Uh, let the patient know what you suspect, but without outright accusation. Support suspicion with facts. Like, you know, you discover that he, he tempered with a thermometer or uh, you found, you know, overdose of anything in, in the blood. Provide empathic, face-saving comment. And rather than confronting and telling the patient you are lying, he could be told, maybe you took it in your sleep. What did you uh, do was a cry for help. We understand. We realize you must be in great distress. We want to continue taking care of you. These words, you know, facilitate a little bit and reach the healthcare worker to, to reach the, maybe the patient. Uh, avoid the probing to uncover patients' underlying feelings and motivations so as to minimize disruption of emotional defenses that are essential to his function. And we don't want in this process to disrupt emotional defenses, except after a long period of support and empathy and, uh, and understanding. Assure patients that only those who need to know will be informed of the suspicion of factitious disease. Make sure staff demonstrate continued acceptance, continuous acceptance for the patient. Attending physicians should not abandon the patient, but should continue to show interest and concern. Encourage psychiatric help. If patient resists, do not force the issue. What is the prognosis? Some people with factitious disorder suffer one or two brief episodes of symptoms, and some are long life. Some cases are chronic. Most cases actually are chronic and long-term. Unfortunately, due to their low self-awareness, many people will not seek or follow treatment. Regarding prevention, there is no known way to prevent factitious disorders, apart from... Uh, parental education about abuse, about neglect, about family problem, and so on. Uh, conclusions, there is great importance of recognizing patients with factitious disorders. Medical mistakes and iatrogenic disease are avoided. Costs of factitious disease are enormous because they go from one hospital to the other. Facilitator of factitious disease is a good medical insurance. If they get paid for medical consultation and investigations in many, many hospitals, you know this is what happened. Thank you very much. This is some references. Thank you for your good listening. Uh, just my final word is that I want to tell you that in my professional medical life, I saw maybe two cases that fit this description, but no more. And I have been working for the last 38 years. 
Thank you very much. شكرا جزيلا دكتور شارلوت على هذا العرض الشامل لموضوع يعني انا باعتقادي انه موضوع مهم ويجب ان يكون هناك معرفه عند الاطباء فيه وخصوصا الاطباء غير نفسيين حيث انه يعني بعض الحالات وانا يعني من الحالات اللي شفتها مريضة كانت تدخل إلى المستشفى بمعدل مرتين أو ثلاثة في الشهر لفترة طويلة استمرت حوالي سنتين أو ثلاثة وتدخل في هايبوغلايسيميا والفحوصات وهل في إنسولينوما أو ما في وأدت هذه إلى يعني إشكاليات والأهل زعلوا غضبوا ثم أخذوا المريضة أيضا إلى الخارج و... ولم يتبين شيء في النهاية المريضة طلبت أن ترى هي من نفسها وحكت لي الموضوع أنه هي عندها مشكلة هبوط سكر غير معروفة فأنا يعني استمريت في الاستماع ما طيب انت شو ما ماذا تعتقدي كان السبب في هبوط السكر؟ قالت لي انا حابه اعرف انت شو رايك؟ قلت لها اذا هبوط السكر كان ما له سبب طبي معناه انت اللي بتنزلي قال يعني ممكن واحد هو ينزل السكر من نفسه؟ قلت كيف؟ بياخذ دواء سكر وهو ما عنده سكر. امم. قالت لي دكتور كان دواء معرفش اذا موجود اسمه داونيل. دكتور انا في كل مره باخذ 30 حبه داونيل. وبستمتع بمنظر الاطباء وهم يتناقشوا وكل يدلي بدلو <تصفيق> ويعني وبتعاركوا و وانا بكون اطلع عليهم بسخريه ولكن انا تعبت صراحه تعبت يعني توقعت انه حد حيكتشفوا ويحاولوني على الطب النفسي بس ما حدش اكتشف فقررت انا طبعا عند الخوض في الموضوع هو واضح انه هناك هيوج يعني سايكولوجيكال بروبلم في مشاكل زوجية مشاكل عائلية مشاكل طفولة واضح بأنه يعني this issue at the beginning has help بأنه أعطاها family support وأعطاها شيء من ال recognition لكن later it became burden عليها أصبحت بتكرره فقط بهدف واحد إنه هي عندها مشكلة مستمرة ولم تنتهي لأن الأطباء ما عرفوا إنه فاتفقنا بأنه خلص تنتهي وإنه هو يعني أنا سأقول لأهلها أن سبب هبوط السكر هو الزعل وبس من غير ما نذكر قضية اللي تفضلتي فيه دكتورة شارو يعني احيانا يضطر انك تتفقي مع المريض من سيعرف لانه موجود اخوها وزوجها و... يعني العيله كلها اصبحت تدور في هاي المشكله فبرغم من سالتها على مدى هالسنوات ما في اي طبيب سالك سؤال اذا انت ماخذه ادويه سكري او هل لي في طبيب واحد سألني إذا أنت ما أخذي أدوية أو إنسولين بعمدا أو خطأ وجاوبت لا بس ما ما من 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 هي حسب إحصائها من 200 طبيب وكانت رجاءها وتوقفت مشكلتها وانتهى الموضوع كان رجاءها الحمد لله دكتور علموا الأطباء 
انه مش بس اذا الفحوصات كانت سليمه معنى المريض ما عنده مشكله وهذه اعتقد رساله مهمه للزملاء في الاختصاصات الاخرى وفي المستشفيات ان يعني حكايه ان الفحص سليم وانت تتحدى المريض انه الفحص سليم لا ينهي المشكله انما ان انا برايي ان الطبيب ان يقول للمريض فحصك سليم لكن عندك مشكله خلينا نتعاون نعرف نساعدك بالمشكله لما فحصك سليم اذا انت ما عندك مشكله هذه اخذت في كثير من الاحيان من في هذه المريضه وغيرها يعني بس هذه كانت يعني قصه كلاسيكيه في طريقة إحداث الهايبوجليسيميا وأعتقد أنه الكثير من الاهتمام يمكن أن نعطيه في المستشفيات العامة not necessarily for factitious disorder somebody who is admitted and been investigated for any symptom and it's the, there is no medical explanation It's reasonable enough to say you, your investigation are okay, but you are not okay. And we need to consult our psychiatrist colleague uh, to see and help what goes on in this attitude. Mm-hmm. Because also what happened, it, uh, uh, this is the way why they reject it. It's, it's mm-hmm. like انت يعني you are faking this you are lying روح شوف طبيب نفسي when it's worded in a, in a way إيه, لا عندك مشكلة خلينا نطلب مساعدة طبيب نفسي it makes a difference of course yeah دكتور نزار شكرا دكتور وليد اوكي مساء الخير على الجميع دكتور نزار اهلا بك شكرا جزيلا ابدا ب انا اشكر دكتور وليد اتس ذا انيفرساري اوف هيز كامبين فور ذا ستيغما اللي هو 22 اوف فبراري 2022 تومورو از 1 يير افتر ذات وثانك يو دكتوره شارلوت فور ذس بيوتيفول ليكتشر ثانك يو ايف سم نوتس تو اد ذا فيرست وان از يو نو ات واز كولد ذس كونديشن واز كولد هوسبيتال اديكشن سندروم اند اند ذا انديفيدوال از دكتور وليد كوركتلي سيد از ساتيسفايد اور جيتس بليجر فروم ذا كير ذات ذا بيشنت جيتس فروم نوت نيسيسيرلي ذا هوسبيتال بريميسز but from any healthcare worker, any person, mm-hmm. not necessarily a doctor, anyone yeah. who works in the medical field, a nurse, a social worker, whoever it is, uh, yeah. the patient gets satisfaction. That's why the patient seeks to be admitted to the hospital. I have one example, I'll, gi- I'll give you more examples, but I have one classical example. Uh, when I was training in the UK, we had a lady who used to come to the uh, uh, emergency department of the hospital every six months. Uh, as you know, the classical example of those patients is that they, they move from one hospital to another and from one city to another because they are known by the staff of the hospital. This patient knew that the staff of the hospital, especially the registrars, are on rotation. They move every six months. The, the, the staff changes every six months. So she comes every six months with <laughs> abdominal distension and labor pains, okay? And once she's admitted, at that time, there were no ultrasonography. I'm talking about 1980, okay? 42 years or 43 years ago. And she was admitted to the uh, Salat al-Wilada and they were waiting for the baby to come out and there was no baby to come out. After a few <laughs> minutes or hours, the abdomen becomes uh, smaller and uh, the, the patient is discharged without any labor. This is one uh, nice example. Uh, in fact, uh, throughout my practice, uh, the last 40 years, I've seen many uh, patients. I've seen people having uh, bleeding from their uh, urethra 
I've seen people having bleeding from their eyes or from their ears. And of course, they were tampering with it. I have seen a patient who I was asked to see in the ophthalmology department. She used to have crystals out of her eyelids. She used to hide crystals, uh, zujaj or ashya okhra, under her eyelid. And every now and then, every morning, just like مثل الدجاجة من تبيض كل يوم تطلع لهم كريستال من عينها so I was asked to see her so these are the kind of people that I see or I saw throughout my experience as far as the malingering side is concerned during the Iraq-Iran war where people were constricted in the army at Tajneed al-Ijbari they used to inject themselves with, for example, uh, modicate and the patient becomes uh, rigid or the patient used to take a sample of blood or sorry, sample of urine from a patient and bring it as if it is his own uh, sample. These are malingering. These are not regarded. So uh, yeah. th therefore, from the uh, uh, the, the doctor should be aware. It is true that you should respect your patient. It's true that you should trust your patient. It's true that you should be uh, very sort of empathetic with the patient. But at the same time, especially in, in medical committees, in forensic settings, I think this is a message for our junior doctors. You should be uh, at the back of your mind. You should expect that sometimes the patient might try to fool you and excuse me for this word. Therefore, you, uh, if you are an experienced doctor, you should not let this really pass by you. Uh, these are the points that I wanted to uh, mention. Ah, the last thing that I wanted to mention is uh, in some of the books, it says that those patients, they have a lot of laprotomies. Therefore, uh, as a joke, they suggest that they should put a zip on the abdomen, يعني سحابة مثل السحابة مع البلوز تفتحها وتسدها. You look in the abdomen and you see that it is uh, nothing there, and then you close it again. Uh, again, throughout my experience, I've seen people swallowing knives, forks, uh, 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 spoons, or putting needles or other things in their, uh, uh, let's say, uh, muscles of their abdomen, and they were all discovered by x-ray. And um, thank you very mm. much. Thank you, Dr. Nizar. Thank you. Yeah. Do you, do you suggest that... Uh, in general hospitals and medical, you know, wards, and you should have always, you know, a psychiatric consultation or counselor or psychologist. No. I mean, if a patient like this, you know, uh, is presenting with serious symptoms and no investigation or clinical examination to back up this early, early in the stage, you know, if he sees somebody, maybe, maybe, you know, maybe nobody suggested to him that he see a counselor or a psychologist. Do you think there is a place that in every general hospital, you know, there is uh, a counselor or a psychologist or well, it just depends. to talk to patients? Yes, it depends on the facilities and it depends on the staff of that uh, hospital. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, in the place where I work, we don't have those kind of people and we have only a limited number of psychiatrists. And by the way, mm. the cases that I've seen, I've seen them when I was acting as a liaison psychiatrist. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, therefore, uh, uh, the, the, the person who's working in the emergency department should suspect this thing. And that's how they ask for a liaison psychiatrist to come and see the patient. But remember, uh, in, in the United Kingdom, and I think it should be everywhere, uh, a person will not be working there unless he rotates, even if he's a surgeon or if, if he's a physician or if he's any other thing. Usually they train for a, a short period of time in the psychiatric department. Uh, and, and that's why they, they, they get this, this index of suspicion. Uh, as far as a psychologist or a counselor in the emergency department, it uh, depends on how many people you have. In my place, we don't have that number for for that reason in my place i don't think it is practical but it's a good idea thank you thank you uh, uh, thank you dr charlotte how can we know if the patient is feigning or exaggerating psychiatric symptoms like anxiety depression do you support providing them with the sick role they 
may be asking for, can we confront the patient in these uh, cases if, if we suspect it? Um, but it's not, you know, an aggressive confrontation. It's rather, you know, trying to ask them what happened exactly, the details. And if the, you know, uh, medical personnel or healthcare worker discovered that, you know, they have done something, uh, they have a videotape or they try to, you know, suggest to them, as I said, you know, these things, maybe you did it when you were sleeping, maybe you were not aware, you were busy and it happened. يعني يوصلوا لهم الرسالة من غير الكونفرونتيشن يعني اللي هي الفورسفول كونفرونتيشن in a nice way, in a empathic way, after building little bit relationship with them. You know, sometimes I notice in psychiatry, when we give the patients time, they start to talk about themselves. يعني they are not uh, uh, iron order. يعني they need times. يعني so if a patient like this is referred, we have to give him time and many sessions and go through his life to see what happened. So maybe, you know, it will raise awareness, you know, internally about uh, what happened previously and why he is feeling like this. يعني it has to be done, done gradually. All literature says that it's no use these cases. They say that it's long, lifelong, but uh, I didn't see a document that some people who were, you know, uh, uh, understood by the medical personnel, referred to psychologists or counseling, and I, I don't have any figures about the results. All what's mentioned is poor prognosis. But I don't agree with it. I think any psychiatric patient you know, you are a professor of psychiatry, Dr. Nazar, and we worked in psychiatry for so many years. Any patient, you know, you can reach through eventually. Yes, I think, you find, you know, I think experience will decide. It's just like the other side. For example, you might be asked, has any patient attacked you or hit you uh, on your body uh, throughout your practice? You might say, well, at the beginning of my work, when I was a junior doctor, Probably one patient did that or two patients yes. did that. But yeah. now, uh, now I learned how to I how to deal with my patient. That's why yeah. I don't let a patient hit me. And the same applies with those kind of patients. By the time you you are thirty or forty years of practice, mm -hmm. you will be able to communicate with your patients in a way that will not insult the patient. At the same time, you get what the patient wants from you. You give it to the patient, and you get what you want. Yes. يعني أنا تعليقي على السؤال صح صحيح بعض المرضى اللي بي بي بيكونوا under our care who are suffering from any psychiatric illness the panic, anxiety, depression they sometimes there are uh, exaggeration of the symptoms not fainting symptom and exaggeration of the symptoms because of some uh, family dynamics and sick role uh, in the family, that is different. That's need uh, to be tackled by, uh, by the psychiatrist as, as in a family uh, session and uh, to, to explore what are these dynamics? What, why are these happening? Why is this young lady uh, keeps on uh, doing this, uh, having conversion attacks, having uh, uh, what looks like panic attack. And sometimes you, the when explain it simply like this to the family, the family realize that, yes, we, I, we think, yes, there is a problem. And they start realizing uh, what you mean and uh, why should they consider this uh, business of abnormal illness behavior? But that's uh, different from factitious patient. Uh, as an example I gave, you have to agree with the patient on what to tell the family. Otherwise, the patient will uh, just drop out and never trust you again. Mm. That's right. You are very right, Dr. Reed. Yeah. 
السلام عليكم تحياتي شكرا دكتور كارلوس حقيقه عليكم السلام دكتور كوني ما ناسيتني ان شاء الله احنا التقينا بمؤتمر قبل اي دونت نو هاو ماني ييرز فاتيتشي اور اكتشولي اي هاف تو شورت كويستشن اند ون كومنت اند اي وونت تو شير ماي اكسبيرينس ويز يو اي هاف 39 ييرز اوف اكسبيرينس اي ستارتد ذا تريننج ان سايكاتري 84 1994 Uh, of course, I was the only uh, registrar in that hospital, uh, My question is, uh, uh, the most common uh, presentation of Munchausen is suffocation. This is the, my first question. The second question, uh, Uh, the symptoms are present when the patient is alone. فما أعرف هذا يعني شوية يتعارض مع الفكرة اللي عندنا إنه it is exaggerated in front of audience. Uh, سؤالين أيضا uh, أضيف إلى يعني اللي ذكرتوا حضراتكم المونشاوزن الموجود إنه they escape يعني after confrontation أصلا ما نلحق يعني يشوف السايكاتس they just leave the hospital. Uh, حضرتك ذكرتي انه انت شايفه سته مونشهاوزن انا في خلال 39 سنه شايفه خمسه بس واحد منهم 3 تايمز لابروتومي <تصفيق> والثلاثه الاخرين كانوا هيموريج يعني اي didn't سي ا كيس اوف سفوكيشن اللي يعني حضرتك ذكرتيها maybe the presentation in our country is uh, more serious because of the war you know we had two three wars التجنيد دائما اجباري من تاسس الجيش العراقي من ال 20 21 الى حد 2003 لكن طبعا خلال وقت الحروب يكون التجنيد مرعب يعني مو بس اجباري وخدمه وانما قضيه حياه فهنا تختار احنا ما كنا صنع قرار يعني كان اللجان العسكريه بس احنا كنا كمقيمين وبعدين كاخصائي بالمستشفيات المدنيه وي ار انفولد In, in a par- partially involved يعني مثلا اما جندي بالاجازه يريد يطولها او يدخل از ان ايمرجنسي في مستشفى مدني ولهذا كان شيء ممنوع او مثلا طالب شارف عمره على 18 وما راح يروح جامعه مثلا فيريد ياجل حتى يتاخر سنه واحده بس يعني حصل التاجيل فذي فين ذس ذي فيك سيمتمز ذي آه الصعوبه كانت يعني حقيقه كاني كتريني شابه والاخصائيين كانوا يعني آه اربعتهم كانوا ات ذات هوسبيتال بليرموك ام ار سي سايك وكان رئيس القسم آه استاذنا العزيز دكتور رياض العزاوي في ذاك الوقت بال 85 المستشفى كانت تحولت الى تعبوي رغم انه هي مستشفى تعليمي مدني يعني ردهات الجراحه والكسور والعيون والاي ان تي كلها باكملها فرغت لل ووندد سولجر اللي يجون من الفرونت لاين فكان دكتور رياض يرسلني <تصفيق> الي يعني وطبعا يعني كانت سيتش تروماتيك سين يعني امبوتيز ثري ثري اورجان امبوتيز تو ليمبس امبوتيز فكانوا يعني واحد اثنين ثلاثه كانوا يستعينون برئيس سايكاتس انه uh, مثلا واحد منهم اتذكر كان uh, يحط ستول بالووند مالته بال... حتى الانفكشن يبقى ان اوردر تو ستي لونجر ان ذا هوسبيتال يعني هذا بالنسبه له عيد هو يعني رغم الجروح البليغه بس هو هي از انجوينج بينج ان سيفل هوسبيتال فتشكل لجنه كذلك ايضا من صرت ممارسه في محافظه بعقوبه ما كان... كنت السايكاترست الوحيده فانطوني صلاحيات اخصائي لمده سنه لان ما موجود كان اخصائي كنت ممارسه يعني عندي براكتس بس ايضا المدير المستشفى خلاني بلجنه الثلاثه جنود كانوا ذي شوت ذير فيت يعني يحط القدم مالته على لغم هم اوريدي جنود بس حتى يطلع من الجيش يضحي <تصفيق> بالفيت كلها تطير وطبعا هو المشكله الاخلاقيه والعلميه انه اذا في Say this is, uh, يعني induced, he will get punished. Mm-hmm. يعني he will not get the reward that he thinks. فاحنا كانت يعني مشكلتنا من تدربنا و... إنه overlapping between malingering, between uh, 
uh, cancer between uh, motivation between uh, induced يعني لأن الموتف دائما كان في primary gain and secondary gain أضيف أيضا قبل ما أنهي أنه أنا أشوف هسه الأجيال الجديدة أسميهم المدللين they are not aware of this يعني mm. يأخذون الكلام من المريض مباشرة يعني فأنا يعني uh, احنا يعني تدربنا وتعلمنا انه نخلي الموتيفيشن ببالنا انه there's a place for faking بسبب الظروف بسبب الموتيفيشن بس الاحظ <تصفيق> الاجيال او الاوكرانيين now they are not aware يعني totally they are not aware of this attitudes يعني تجي المقيمه والمقيمه دكتوره هذا سايكوتيك او هذا يقول انا كذا كذا اقول لها شوفي هذا مثلا جندي او شرطي You want a long sick leave. And you might be might be a motive is exaggerating. Oh, I just wanted to share my experience with you. Uh, <laughs> reported في الليترشر ده بس طبعا يعني ممكن يبقى في ترانس كالتشرال ديفرنت ويز اوف كورس مش عارفه الصوت ماله يمكن يكون في ترانس كالتشرال ديفرنت ويز اوف يو نو كوبينج وذ ذيس بس بالنسبه للجنود دول هو هو هي الاوير اوف وات از دوينج يو نو اند هي وونت تو ذير از اجين يعني ان هو بيعمل الحاجه وفي ماتيريال جين الفاكتيشيس ديس اولدر ما فيش ماتيريال جين كله unconscious psychological internal يعني ده ال ده الفرق اذا في هيطلع بمصلحه من وراء ادعاء المرض هيبقى مش هيبقى فاكتيشيس يو نو اكيد اكيد يس اكيد طبعا وي ار اوير اوف ذس بس هي يعني احيانا تصير اوفرلاب بيكوز اوف ذا يعني بيكوز اوف بريزنس اوف موتيفيشن حتى مش مش بالنسبه للجنود يعني حتى بالمثلا الموظف يريد لونج سكليف or retirement whatever it is يعني كثير قضايا بالمجتمع يدخل الموتف بيها يعني as you said there is again but I think there is also an, an a subconscious motivation and that motivation in the subconscious level yes أكيد عفوا عفوا على الكومنتس وديتينا فكرة عن المجندين مساكين ربنا يوقف معاهم دكتوره صفيه السلام عليكم وعليكم السلام عليكم السلام اهلا دكتوره صفيه الله يخليكم استاذتنا الكريمه وشكرا على المحاضره الشيقه حقيقه وسبحان الله امس كنت اتناقش في حاله ما اعرف اكو تشويش بالصوت هل هو بسببي نعم امس كنت اتناقش بحاله عن فاكتيشيس انا عندي يعني ولو Uh, I have no much experience مقارنة بحضراتكم أساتذتنا I see uh, four or five cases uh, of factitious four of them factitious and one by proxy uh, ال- الشيء الجيد in my locality أنه our physician they aware of, of this uh, disorder يعني كل الحالات هم محاولين من physician فهذا الشيء الجيد وبشكل خاص هم اللي uh, إحنا عندنا الأطباء اللي هم على التعليم يعني الاساتذه في كليه الطب هم يعني كل الحالات محوله من قبلهم. وانا كوني ايضا تدريسيه في كليه الطب يعني احاول مع طلابي الحاليين انه تو فوكس اون ذيس ديس اوردر خاصه هم راح يروحون تخصصات اخرى انه ديرز وان هو نوت سو كومن لكن كيب ان يور مايند ذيس ديس اوردر فيعني سريعا الحالات تو اوف ذيس كيسز هم سكين ليجين يعني حسب ما هو اخبرني الفيزيشن كونه زميل في الكليه انه ذس هو ذس فيزيشن يعني فيري افيشنت قال انه هذا السكيل ليجن نوت فيت وذ اني سكيل ليجن فهو شك بالموضوع الاذر كيس هي كان فروم سيرجن تجي تحقن نفسها بال يعني جت هو كبريست ابسس وحسب الكلام السيرجن انه هي تريت هير يعني الى صار كومبليت يعني هيل اوف ذا ابسس ويقول بس اطلعها شي اجين يعني هو يشك يقول انا متاكد شي انجكت هير سيلف باي ايفن سم تايمز ثينك اباوت سوري يعني في كم ماتيريال يقول انا اسوي لها كالتشر فتطلع البكتيريا يعني 
مو مال اليوجوال بكتيريا يعني هي هي ثينك اباوت ات حتى راقب يعني وصل الاهل وهي فعلا عندها فد سوشيال او سايكو سوشيال فاكتور الشيء اللي يحصل انه المرضى اللي شفتهم وهم يحاولوها ليمي تجيني زياره واحده حسيت يعني من الحالات الثلاثه او الاربعه اللي شفتهم انا يعني ما اواجههم بالفكتيشيس يعني اول دي ديناي ذات يعني احاول ان اندايركتلي اتاكد انه زي دو ذات واحاول يعني اقول بالزياره الثانيه لكن ما يجوني زياره ثانيه يروحون يراجعون يعني كانما يحسون انه اي ديسكفر اور اي نو ذات دو ذات سو زي اسكيب زي اسكيب فروم يو يعني بالضبط يعني مو بس انا اي دكتور يحسون انه هو اكتشف امرهم بعد ما يراجعوا والشغله الثانيه انه مثلا راحوا راجعوا الدكتور يجون يحكون عليه امامي انه هذا الدكتور و... يعني خاصه فعلا هم الفيزيشن مرات يقول له انت تسوين يعني يصير فد علاقه متوتره بين الفيزيشن والمريض يواجهها يعني دايركتلي انت هذا مسوي عمد وهذا مو شيء فهي تجي تحكي على الدكتور وهكذا فقط تستمر مع الدكتور اللي تحس انه هو بعد ما ما مكتشفها ف يعني حقيقه هم جدا يعني فيري ديفيكالت بيشنت وانا احاول يعني انه تو فيزيت السايكولوجيست تحتاج سايكوثيرابي والى اخره ف يعني هاي تجارب بسيطه واللي كانت باي بروكسي حقيقه انا بعد ما كنت بهذا الاختصاص شفتها في ردهات الاطفال كان يعني خطيه عندها اطفال سنه ودون السنه طفلين كل فتره تجيبها على الطوارئ الاطفال تنطيهم كونتامينيتد ميلك او ووتر كلها بس حتى تجي هي الام وتحصل على الميديكال كير وثانك يو فيري ماتش شكرا دكتوره صفيه ما هو لاحظي حضرتك بنسمع عن الحوادث دي اللي هي مانشاوسن باي بروكسي ده يعني كتير تسمعي عن امهات عملت في اولادها بس نرجع للحاله اللي قلت عليها اللي هي اللي هي لما فهموا لما الشخص اللي عنده فاكتيشيس تندنسي فهم ان انت اكتشفتيه او ده راح ابراها على مستشفى تاني بس ذيس از بيزيكلي وات ات از يعني هم عايزين يقعدوا في المستشفيات ويترددوا على ناس دكاتره وبيرسونيل سكيل بيرسونيل مش قادرين يكتشفوا ان ان هم يعني زي ار ديسيفينج ذيم ما هي عمليه يعني ديسيفينج من قبل الشخص المريض للطبيب او الهيلث سكيل وركر فهو هو يعني زي ما تقولي ايه عايز يفضل كده يبقى مريض في نظر الطبيب علشان ايه يتمتع بالسيمباسي والامباسي والكير والمحايله والتحمل فدي دي يعني جوهر الموضوع كله ان هم انترنالي ذي ار برايفت بيبول في ايموشنال ديبرايفيشن من الابيوز من الحرمان من المشاكل وعايزين يعوضوا يعوضوا ازاي وبيقول لك اتعودوا على السفرنج يعني المواقف اللي حصلت لهم في ذير ايرلي لايف في حياتهم خلتهم يحسوا ان السفرنج ده لابد يبقى موجود فبيعذب نفسه كونشسلي علشان انكونشسلي يلجا بقى للدكاتره ويحس بالعاطفه وياخد حنان و... والدكتور يتخض عليه وعايز يعمل له الفحوصات وده. اتس ا بيج بروبلم لان اللي مظلوم في الموضوع ده الضحيه هو الطبيب الصراحه لانه ممكن يعمل عمليه والعمليه يحصل لها كومبليكيشن يبدا المريض الفاكتيشس ده يشتكي عليه. يعني هو فيري ريسكي فيري ريسكي كونديشن يمكن آه لازم ننبه زملائنا زي ما اتفضل دكتور وليد وقال لازم ننبه زملائنا اللي بيشتغلوا في المستشفيات العامه انه اذا ما فيش تشخيص يعملوا تيم ورك ونشوف ايه الموضوع انما ما يتكتموش على الموضوع وبعدين ما يعملوش عمليه المريض من غير سبب يعني اذا هو ما ما فيش اي انديكيشن ليه ليه تسوي له فالطبيب ضحيه في مع الفاكتيشس ديسيز الطبيب الباطني او الطبيب الجراح. نعم. وده وده عشان كده كنت بسال دكتور نزار بقول له يعني هل الطبيب النفسي او السايكولوجيست او الكونسلور لازم يبقى متواجد في المستشفيات العامه؟ يعني احنا في البحرين عندنا ليزون سايكاتري فيري اكتيف انا اللي بداته في البحرين لما جيت من انجلترا بدأنا لأن كان طول النهار يحولوا الحالات من المستشفى ونروح ونيجي فعملنا ليزون تيم 
كانوا طول النهار يندهونا على حالات زي دي. يفيد يمكن في بعض ال... عندما بتوفرش عدد اطباء يفيد انه وجود يعني سايكولوجيست سوشيال وركر with some training who can just at least sit with the patient and find out a little bit more what physician would ask. Physician عادةً حيسألوا عن symptom و duration و radiation و pain and they never go into the ظروف و circumstances و حب و غرام و طلاق و زواج و they have no, no way even mm. to ask about this matter. Now, mm. if there is any anybody, any counseling, any anybody you, we, you who can be even trained for six months with uh, mm. any degree, sometimes even we have now uh, psychiatric nurses who they have a master degree in psychiatric nursing. Having one in, in the hospital will make a big difference for emergency. Yeah. Dialysis, fill burn, fill wars, mm-hmm. uh, and this person would uh, find the, mm-hmm. the way to refer to refer to a psychiatrist much better than uh, the, the the physicians themselves, and I believe uh, this should be standard practice in every hospital and the yeah. based on psychiatrist can be mm-hmm. done. That will be the optimal. Yeah, we enjoyed very much that experience in Bahrain. Uh, we were covering Salmania Hospital. Actually, we never sat down يعني, from morning till uh, the time finish. We are going around the walls. Mm-hmm. And uh, the beautiful thing is the staff starts to ask for help sometime and support. It's a nice service, by the way. يعني, and I feel it's important. في الانكولوجي كمان دكتور وليد الانكولوجي بيشنت they need a lot of support mm-hmm. you know they are not faking يعني they are uh, <laughs> يعني they need a lot of support and increasing their morale so they can combat the illness and accept the treatments poor compliance good compliance ف... والفيكنج ده لازم يكتشفوه مبكر يعني لازم الدكاترة اللي بتشتغل في الجنرال هوستل والجراحين وده يبقى عندهم سم كايند اوف سسبيشن اندكس يعني ما لقاش حاجة طب هيعمل عملية ليه؟ عشان يرضي المريض بس أنا متهيألي المشكلة مش في الطب العام المشكلة بقى في الحاجات الخاصة اللي هو هي ويل جيت ماني أوت أوف ذا أوبريشن سو إف ذا بيشنت وونت تو دو ذا أوبريشن هي كان دو إت فور هيم يمكن يجوز دكتورة منى الرخاوي تفضلي. شكرا دكتور شارلوت وليد دكتور نزار. انا دكتورة منى. اهلا بحضرتك. باي ذا واي يعني انا بروفيسور الرخاوي واز ماي واز ذا وان ذات توت مي سايكاتري وانا واز ان فاينل يير ميديكال سكول. اند هي نوز مي هي يوز تو نو مي فيري ويل. جريت مان. يو ار لاكي تو هاف هاد ساتش ا فازل حبيبتي الله يرحمه. ميرسي لحضرتك شكرا. يرحمه. الحقيقه انا بس يعني وانا بسمع التوك الجميل قعدت افتكر انا شفت كم بيشنت فكتشس سولد مش فاكره شفت باي بروكسي لايك تو بيشنتس يعني از فار از انا انا ذا سيم تايم افتكرت انا كنت شغاله في كونسلتيشن مش كنت شغاله كنت فيزيت ريزيدنت في كونسلتيشن ليزون في اليو سي ال اي وكنت بقول لهم هناك اكتشفوا حاله نادره من الكونفرجن ديس اوردر كنت بقول لهم ده احنا عندنا الكونفرجن ديس اوردر ده يعني حاجه كده زي صباح الخير كده في كل يوم الصبح على بنشوف كتير جدا فانا مش عارفه الترانسكالتشرال يعني ستادي زي ما يكون انا كيوريس نشوف هل في ديفرنس از ات فور ذا ديفيشنت بوزيشن اوف الكونسلتيشن ليزون Uh, psychiatry in our countries عشان كده we do not see much هما they are aborted من اول بيروحوا من من, من بره بره زي ما بنقول من ال uh, wherever بقى الميديكال فيلد uh, اللي هم رايحين له uh, ونادرا اما بيريفيرد يوصلوا لنا for this مم. ولا هو ال level of conscious انه the more the unconscious trans يعني uh, expression of uh, uh, somatic symptom Uh, mm. In our, يعني developing countries, 
او يعني وير ديفرنت يمكن ان تيرمز اوف اكسبريشن اوف سيمبتومز عن الويسترن كلتشر انا ام جاست ريفلكتينج على اي اي ثينك يور اوبينيون از فيري كوريكت بيكوز يو نو ات واز ويل نون اول ذا تايم ذات يو نو اكسبريسينج سوماتيك سيمبتومز ان اكزاجريشن از مور كومون تو ميدل ايست اند فار ايست كلتشرز حتى اللي شفناهم في اوكي لما اشتغلنا من من الفار ايست كانوا على طول سوماتايزرز فيمكن ان ده ليفل اوف اكسبريشن اه يعني يمكن هناك بي زي بوتل اب ان سم بليسز اور سم انديفيدوالز زي هاف ذا ابيليتي تو بوتل اب اند ذن يو نو اتس ديجريز لان السوماتيك سيمتوم يعني انا بتكلم على البحرين انا جيت البحرين سنه 86 كان فيري كومن فيري كومن يو نو يعني اللي هي ماي هارت ماي ليج والمالتيبل سوماتيك بينز ويبقى ما عندهمش حاجه و... ف يو ار اتس ا فيري جود بوينت يا هي الليفل اوف سبريشن يمكن اوف كونفليكت اند تروماز اند يو ار بيتر ذان اس You are better than us in, uh, in <laughs> this area. You are very famous. مش عارفه رأي دكتور وليد ايه في الموضوع ده؟ يعني انا برايي انه احنا الريفيرال عندنا very limited. يعني once if you go do any study in a general hospital, you find everything. Patients, uh, <clears throat> panic, anxiety, depression. The hospital is full of these patients, and there are reasons why they are not referred. Some of them because of ignorance, others because of financial reasons. Reason. Sometimes the physicians and hospitals are benefiting in private practice from these patients, and they don't mind. They. Keep coming, be admitted again and again, doing investigation. And there is, uh, unfortunately, some sinister explanation uh, in uh, together with this uh, sort of, uh, يعني, I'm, I'm a cardiologist, I do all the tests and you are free and that's it. I have nothing to do with it. I don't care what is your problem. This is uh, this attitude, I think, mm-hmm. is prevailing in the Arab world, and uh, it, uh, we have to work hard to minimize yeah. this attitude. And talking about uh, the stigma, is the stigma among the medical profession uh, of psychiatry, psychiatric illness, and psychiatrists is much higher than the general population. You all see colleagues coming to the clinic oh. consultation, and you see their reluctance and the way uh, they they want uh, they don't want to give their names. They don't want you to write anything because it's it will be any uh, scandal uh, that he's treated for depression. I would say, even dealing with the physician patients. Is is extremely difficult. It's be, be they are so yeah. so difficult in accepting this uh, this fact. And I believe going back to the medical schools and improving the undergraduate education of uh, in psychiatry. That's the difference. If you look now at the psychiatry curriculum in. Uh, in the UK, in the USA, in Canada, Australia, you will find uh, quite an amazing, uh, huge curriculum and three program for undergraduate. It's not just sending them to the Abbasiyya or the, uh, general a mental hospital to see chronic schizophrenia. No, they have to go to outpatient clinic and to see the real world. What is in mental hospital is probably represent two percent of psychiatry. They don't. They don't actually see psychiatry. And if it's six weeks uh, rotation to a mental hospital, it's usually taken as a, a holiday, go and have fun and so on. So I think uh, 
work has been to has to be done on upgrading the curriculum of psychiatry in medical schools and that's uh, going back to the root and for all for those already in, in medical practice uh, the education, lectures, and awareness is of extreme importance. Yeah, I'm sure you are right, Dr. Walid. It has to start from early stages and grow up in awareness of psychiatry. And uh, nowadays, the WHO puts psychiatry as uh, essential psychiatry. Mm -hmm and behavioral yeah. things and mental health and counseling is essential for patients, for anyone. Yes, true. So it has to start from early stage and attract people to psychiatry because still people now, you know, don't specialize too much in psychiatry. And I asked my students the other day, all of them, even the girls want to go to surgery. Mm -hmm. <laughs> a, new, a new fashion. <laughs> يعني سايكاتري احنا في البحرين عدد السايكاتريست قليل بير بوبيليشن يعني جزيلا يعني ادركنا الوقت شكرا جزيلا دكتور شارلوت شكرا شكرا دكتور نزار دكتور مها لكل الحضور محاضره رائعه ولقاء جميل نراكم الثلاثاء القادم ان شاء الله صبحونا على خير ألف شكر دكتور وليد وألف شكر للجميع مع السلامة شكرا باي